the JLR Interview Series. Hello, my name is Sophia Alexandra Hall and I'm with the Jazz London Radio. Today I am interviewing fantastic jazz vocalist Claire Martin. Claire has just won the Best Vocalist of the Year at the British Jazz Awards. Congratulations, first of all. Thank you very much, Sophia. Thank you. How did you celebrate after hearing the news? How did I celebrate? Well, actually, I was in a, I was in a rehearsal in... A, in a basement with no windows or air in Stockholm <laughs> with my Swedish trainer that I'm working with and um, I, cu- I couldn't really go out and have a few beers because the next day I had to rehearse and I was in the middle of a bit of a run of you know, concentrating <laughs> uh, but I did when I got home have a very nice uh, glass of champagne with my husband because it's lovely to be recognised and um, to be remembered uh, after all this time as well and for people to to still vote for me, I'm, I'm really chuffed. It kind of means more than when I was starting out because it's, I, I guess I'm, I'm still doing things that people are interested in hearing. So that, that, that made me feel pretty happy. Amazing. So this is your eighth win, isn't it? It's my eighth win. <laughs> Which, I mean, to be honest with you, I think there are a lot more singers in town and around mm. that um, should have been on that list, you know. And I, and I do feel like Leanne and I have won this, Leanne Carroll, sorry. Mm. Um, Claire Teal, Tina May, Christine Tobin, Ian Shaw, it kind of goes round and round these people. I mean, Georgia Mancho deserves an award imminently because she's just such a fantastic force of good. You know, um, Emma Smith, I absolutely think is a fantastic yeah. singer. I mean, really great. Gwyneth Herbert, I think is just world class. So they you know, it's funny really because I think they should broaden the net, but I'm not saying that I'm not glad to win, of course I'm. <laughs> of course. <laughs> but um, you know, I it would be nice now if uh the younger singers like Zara McFarlane who won the um Parliamentary Jazz yeah. Award got a little bit of recognition and, and, and people that have really been soldiering on, you know, for for and putting so much effort into their careers. Um so it might be nice if they had a sort of panel that Big Bear music where they could sort of say, okay, who, do, who would you suggest, you mm. know, and, and then I could, you know, throw some ideas into the hat. So um, in uh, Montgomery that day, and I was, I was very in awe. Um, and then over the years, and remember this is a 30-year career, so seven times in that time is fantastic. I'm, I'm very, very oh, grateful. Oh, God, 100%, yeah. I'm very grateful. But awards are funny, aren't they? You sort of, <laughs> you sort of I don't know, anyway. It is what it is, but but there there are many singers I think now that really deserve a turn, and 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 should should get the prize because um, it does help. It does help with press. It, I mean, mm, your course. opening statement was that, and you know it really helps, especially going abroad. You say you put that on your CV or your CV or your bio. <laughs> CV. What am I going to say? Sorry. Um, it does help. People recognise that. So yeah. So thank you. Awesome. Yeah, hire Claire for the panel next year. Oh, yeah, I'll sort you out. (laughs) A few singers I've got my eye on. (laughs) Well, this wasn't the only award you've won recently. Mm. You've also won a gold award from A gold badge. Yeah, a gold badge award. (sighs) Do you know what? Nothing happens and then they come in, you know, I have two awards this year. That's brilliant. (laughs) So um, the the gold badge award, I had to research actually because Basca I mean I am a member of PRS PPL mm. of course I am thank God for them um, but it's a there's a British British Association of Songwriters Composers uh, Association <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I thought it would be more songwriters and you know obviously composers mm. but uh, last year again Leanne Carroll won it and this year I got it because they are acknowledging people like us who are singing people's songs yeah. uh, and out there giving songwriters vehicles for their work to be heard. Um, and it was thanks to Izzy Barrett, actually, and um, Orphie Robinson, who are on the panel of Basca, mm. who said to them, you know, let's shine a light on some of the jazz talent and uh, yeah. for these awards. So I guess that's why I was thinking about going on, you know, with the Big Bear Association, they're getting on a, on a board, because... Um, I'm not saying that they they wouldn't have noticed me. Perhaps they would, but in that room that day of the of the award ceremony, um, there wasn't a lot of jazzers. Let's put it that way. It okay. was it was much more, um, you know, songwriters like Chris Difford, um, f- uh, managers of, of record labels, sound engineers, songwriters. Right. I mean, it was very so. 
I kind of stood out a little bit as a, as a but, but, but that was fine, you know, that oh, was, totally that was, that was yeah. <laughs> And it was such a glamorous day out and I've never been so scared in my life. <laughs> the oh, second only to my wedding day was my heart beating that fast. <laughs> absolutely Why? Because I just felt, because there was 11 awards, I was number nine. Okay. You sent up your designated uh, friend who was going to... Um, uh, 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 give you your badge, uh-huh. present your badge. Uh-huh. So you had to sit through your presenters, t- and then you had to go and and, and, say, and do your thank you to a speech, <laughs> and, and that filled me with terror because the nine before me, sorry, yeah, no, yes, I was, I don't know, the eight before eight. me, <laughs> the eight before me, um, all had these sort of presenters that were really eloquent and funny, like Nick <laughs> Sawney got up and did this fantastic thing. And then they got, they brought the award winners up and they were fantastic and they, were, and they had it all planned and they were all natural and I was just thinking, I have none of that planned. I've just got a few people to thank and I'm just, so I was very, very nervous. So as it ticked on, you know, the heart was thumping, I was palpitating, sweating. Um, I, but my, my presenter was Pete Long. I was oh, Pete Long. brilliant. Okay. I, I got Pete Long, who's a dear friend and a, such a good raconteur and a force of good uh, that he got up and did a great speech about jazz and about the necessity of everybody in that room recognising it and that people don't, you know, shouldn't just have a poster of John Coltrane or Dexter <laughs> Gordon. They should also buy the records, otherwise we're going to become a victim. It's going to become, it's going to be a victim of its own iconoclasm, you know. It's just going to be just, mm. it's just going to be a thing that people think they love because it's hip but don't actually go to the gigs. So he did a bit of a speech about that and everybody clapped. I thought, oh great, you know, he's funny. So even if I'm rubbish, he's good. <laughs> And then I just got up and gushed a bit and went all stupid. I don't know what I said. But um, I'm sure you it was it. thrilling. I said thank you to everybody. And, I, and what I wanted to say was to, to thank songwriters for letting jazz musicians do what, you know, kind of, you know, do their own thing and, and change all the harmony and possibly the melody. Definitely not the lyrics, but, you know, I, I, I forgot about that. And I ended up forgetting to say I, so I thank most of the musicians I work with. So, and then you get this gold badge, which is, you know, it's fantastic, and this, um, and I met Guy Garvey, who I love. I love Elbow, and uh, and I went and had a chat with him and a selfie, and it was just everybody was lovely. The food was, and on my table there was a champagne bucket which just said for Claire, just the whole bottle. Fantastic. So I thought <laughs> that's a bit classy. <laughs> so uh, we had that afterwards. So um, that was actually thrilling, and I looked around and I thought, wow, if only the jazz scene could be like this you know that we could have 20 tables of 10 people they've paid hundreds for these tickets fair i mean it's a different world it is a different world i sat mm-hmm. next to this guy who'd written the, the the song congratulations for cliff richards <laughs> you know and and wrote songs for for elvis and you know they, these people have really made money from music you know really from from songwriting and and, and it was another world really and then I was on the sort of jazzers table, <laughs> all excited that I had a bottle of champagne. <laughs> but I would like to stress that that was much to do with Izzy Barrett, and I'm very grateful for that. Fantastic, awesome. So you've got a um, new album coming out, is that correct? I have. I've got actually. I've got a sort of couple. It's strange. I've had a, I've had a real sort of. Well, one is not with my usual label. One is with a label called Sundance, okay. and they're based in Denmark. Okay. And they were very keen for me to do something with Jim Marlon to mark Wes Montgomery's 50th, um, f- the anniversary of his death, 50 years. So I did, with some Danish musicians and um, Jim Mullen, we did an album that's out very, very soon on Sundance Records. I hope it gets distribution in the UK. I really do. It's called Bumpin'. Bumpin'. And it's um, one of the Wes Montgomery tunes. And it's some original tunes, uh, Wes tunes, and then some standards that Wes played and that comes out soon but my 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 actual new band and the album that I've literally just done mm. will come out in May and that again is with Lynn Records who have just stuck by me this is my 20th one right <laughs> I'm like oh good good god they're still with me and and they're like where do you want to do this time so well, I've got this new band that I've found these guys from Sweden I absolutely love and uh, they came to see me at Ronnie's with them and they said yeah this would really record nicely and I was very thrilled so we just went in and did it and that will be out in May and that's going to be called Believe In It which is a track I learnt from Andy Bay the wonderful singer Andy Bay so I guess I'm still sort of believing in it but uh, that's, that made sense to me and it'll be out and, and I'm just putting together a little tour for May and June so yeah what's the setup of the band is it the setup of the band is p- 
pure and simple cheer nice. uh, and see it. And, and I haven't done that for a while. Mm. If not, I don't know if I've ever done that. I've always had guests like Jim Muller and Nigel Hitchcock. And these guys are, um, they come at it from such a sort of sophisticated, uh, their approach is very uh, about dynamics. I've never known musicians to be concerned that that concerned about the dynamics of the solo, the way they, you know, the, how they're going to support me. It's really special. And we talk for ages about, you know, it's very unusual for me. Not saying that the musicians I've worked with before hadn't. <laughs> sure. But, but these guys seem to have a, um, a real awareness around that dynamic of, of playing with a singer, which I really appreciate because it, it brings something else to it and therefore brings me out in a different way. So we did a couple of standards, but I've done a couple of 80s tunes that I've sort of reimagined and I've written a lyric to a... Pat Matheny song, oh, nice. uh, and uh, through Gwilym Simcock, uh, Pat Matheny said, "Yeah, that's okay. She can do that." Because that's what I said, "Give that to Pat." We were on the gig with him, and see, so he said, "That's good," and I was really pleased about that. Mm. And it's got a uh, Karen Krog song, John Sermon. Uh, so it's got a little bit of European there, and um, and also a song by Duncan Lamont, a great uh, Scottish saxophonist, who's um, a really, really good song songwriter. So it's. It's a little bit of everything. Song by Ten CC is on there, and it's my usual sort of mix. But it's but it but it is a classic trio trio album. Yeah. Okay. How did you guys meet? We met because I went to Sweden to do a tour with an American pianist called Lynn Ariel. Okay. Um, and a saxophonist called Grace Kelly. So yes. they yeah. So they had like the three girls, um, and uh, which was cheesy, but it worked. And the, and the two guys, uh, Martin Schersted and Daniel Fredrickson, were on that gig as bass and drums. So I met mm. them. And then it turns out that the bass player, Martin, also is the pianist, was a pier- is a pianist. <laughs> so he ended up being the pianist in my band and said, oh, I'll get my friend Nick. I said, anyway, long, long and short of it is. I, I enjoyed it so much with them. Uh, I said, I'd love to work with you again. So through Lynn Arialto is how I met them. And that was about four years ago, so it's taken a while to get it together and try things out, and of course they're in Sweden, but I can get from my house to, to the rehearsal room in Stockholm probably about as quick as I can get from my house to Watford, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> but, you know, I might as well just go to Gatwick, jump on a plane, they meet me. Hop over to Sweden. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I might as well. So um, it's actually, you know, please God, if bloody Brexit does go ahead... <laughs> That doesn't change because that's been super simple, and I can I can just rehearse a couple of days with them, and we really we really concentrate because they 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 kind of think oh blimey she's she's flown all the way from London to do this we better come up with the dynamics, <laughs> uh, but they're they're really nice they are younger than me that's really good you know the bass player is very young he's thirty, the oldest one's forty three and the other I don't know but they, I don't know whether that just brings that sort of youthful energy but. It's very, it's very nice having them, and they and they speak perfect English, and they're really course, smart, yeah. and they turn up on time, and they wear beautiful suits, and <laughs> I mean, they, they, they just, oh, I love the Swedes. I think, yeah, definitely. Brilliant. I'm Swedish, so. Are you Swedish? Yeah, I'm Swedish. Oh, <laughs> there you go. I walk right into that. <laughs> I know. I'm just building it up a bit. <laughs> yeah, no, I just, I just, I love going there. I really, I really do. And I, and also, having said that, I should say, you know, the the the, the Danish album with Jim Mullen. Um, hmm. Again, you know, just great to do gigs in Denmark, great to have a... Uh, it seems they're younger than the jazz audience out there, it definitely does. You know, very attentive, they they appreciate, you know, the club scene, so, you know, well attended, and the, uh, they, they pay so much tax, you know, that most of the places I go and sing in have got a beautiful Steinway, fantastic sound system, as Zara, because they, you know, that they invest in their culture, yeah. they invest in the arts, they're taxed very heavily, and they, do, they want something back for that. And uh, they get it, you know, and, and so I walk in and go, wow, I've got a whole person looking after my monitors. Oh, you know, it's unbelievable. So I'm very, I'm really happy to keep going up Scandinavia. It's good for me. But I, I, I the, the gigs I'm putting together for the tour are lovely. You know, the stables in Wavendon, and Ronnie Scott's. And, nice. And very, so I'll, I'll bring them over for that. And we're coming over to um, the Soho Pizza Express oh, in December. Yes. I've called it the cool Scandi Yule. 
<laughs> so cheesy. Um, but it's they're coming over for the 14th and 15th of December, and that's selling really well. So, and I'll have a special guest each night, and uh, we can do some Christmas nonsense. Because apparently in Sweden they have these hats with real candles on or something. Yeah, and they're going to bring them it. over, and uh, I said, okay, fine. They're really they're all excited. So. When's the date of that? 14th and 15th of December? Um, that's why, because um, Santa Lucia, when they when they have all the candles, is the 13th. So it's kind of it's really fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. I, I just think it's good for me to go. I'm still singing here I am, but check these guys out. You know, I'm bringing I'm bringing some new talent over that people probably wouldn't have seen in at the York Early Music Centre. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's 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 good news. So, uh, yeah, I think the the British players I've played with, you know, they're fantastic. But after a while, you've got to try new things. Oh, completely, mm. completely. So, shall we play a track of one of your 20 albums? Oh, <laughs> blimey. Yes, please do. Maybe, I was thinking, one album that I will only ever do one of is when I did a collaboration with a cello quartet. Mm. My daughter was learning cello, and I loved her teacher, and he said, I've got a cello quartet. And without even thinking it through, I said, oh, let me do some stuff with you. I hadn't thought that through at <laughs> all. Just, here, off I went. So, um... We went into the studio and I had to ask some mates for some favours. I thought, well, I, I know that if I ask a few great musicians, they might they might step up and go, yeah, that's an interesting thing to try and do. You know, not not string quartet, cello quartet. Mm. So I, I phoned, I spoke to my lovely friend, Jeffrey Keezer, who's just one of the planet's most amazing pianists. Um, and he's got a song called Featherfall, written for his two children. Uh, his first two children, <laughs> I might add. Um, and we and he did an arrangement for it, so I, I was really proud of that. I, I haven't sang it since, so I kind of miss singing that. So maybe we could play that. Let's do that. <laughs> Once I dreamt I held a daughter of flowing waters, half a world. From me. And in time there came another, a baby brother, a mystery and perfect mirror. For ten years of my life I clung to what I thought was true. In the darkening days that followed, my heart grew hollow. No charms could soothe my aching soul. And I've fallen and I've stumbled, my spirit humbled, while you've grown strong and beautiful. Time has come to lift this mask I've worn for all these years I've longed for your forgiveness Your anger and your tears and the stones in time will crumble From these weathered castle walls Just let me down you like a feather falls Let me down easy like a feather falls Now I've found my soul companion Who won't abandon Who walk with me through fire and rain In these arms I come undented I'm reinvented 
I find my wings and fly again. With every breath my spirit gets a little bit untied, loosening the fear that kept me safe and paralyzed. And the stones in time will crumble from these weathered castle walls. Just let me down easy like a feather falls. Just let me down easy like a feather. Like a feather falls. So you're performing at the EFG Jazz Festival yeah. this year. Your concert is this Saturday, I mm. believe. Leanne Carroll, who is without question one of my favourite singers ever and people and I um, have such a laugh together. Um, a few years ago, we said, well, let's do some gigs, and, and we called it Double Standards, which I thought was quite genius, actually, and she yeah, was pleased good. with that. Um, that's the, the only ever good name I've come up with. And, and she um, <laughs> she and I do a... We did a tribute to Ella last year, but mm. this week, you know, do a sort of mishmash of everything. We're like, and we've got the great trumpeter Martin Shaw to be our oh, guest. amazing. He's amazing. He really, really is amazing. So he's going to play some really great trumpet and it's at St John Smith Square Church so um, good acoustic for us the piano is beautiful yeah. and um, yeah I mean it's it's great to be in a, in, a, in a really nice space like that at the London Jazz Festival as you know is an offer it is in all sorts of places small and large and, and I think that that suits Leanne and I it's, it's nice so fingers crossed we'll have a full house the tickets are selling all right yeah. brilliant what time does it start it's a 7 30 start Awesome. Have you managed to get um, down to any of the other concerts this year? I will be on that day, and I will be that night. I, I, the one I really, really, really wanted to go and see was I wanted to see Leah Delaria in Jazz Voice. Yeah. And um, not only her, but also uh, all, all the other singers, Zara, Alan Harris. And, yeah, yeah, Zara, exactly. Alan Harris, I'm, I love. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, I love. It's just great. Uh, but, but something came up for me, sadly. I live in Brighton. Yeah. And... and, and <laughs> And it's only it's not far Brighton, but it, it is if you've got to get up and down and, and so I've got to really kind of pick when I go. Um and then I was working and now this is my chance this weekend, so I, I probably will see what's going on at Ronnie Scott's and uh tomorrow I will go to see Stan Saltzman. I'm going to that. Yeah, so yeah, it's uh, gonna be good. It's gonna be great at the Passau Room and um I'll play it. I'll, I'll I'll probably be in town on Saturday and it'll only be half nine when we finish and Leanne and I will look at each other and we'll go <laughs> Where should we go? <laughs> and then uh, the following night, Joe Steele goes big band at the same place. I have every intention to go and see Joe and support him. Um, so, I've, uh, you know, I should go to more, but that living in Brighton thing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tricky. It's tricky, to be honest. Because I tell you why it's tricky. It's not because I don't want to come. It's not because I haven't got the will and the passion for it and, the, you know, the money to get up and down. It's not that. It's the trains. You can be lumbered, you're stuck, you know, it's, it's, it really is. It stops you, stops your fun. So um, I'll be doing these things tomorrow and, and uh, the weekend. Fantastic. I love seeing you and Leanne perform because you guys are probably the two, like, powerhouse women in jazz at the moment, like, in the That's UK, in the UK scene. Um, which is why I wanted to ask you about the current women in jazz exhibition at the Barbican. Mm. Why do you think these sorts of exhibitions are you know, needed and good for yeah. the jazz scene. Oh, I think it's I think it's great. And I have thank you for talking about that because I was reading about it this morning and I do need to, I do need to go and see that. It's a free event. Yes. Which is fantastic. Whatever you think I mean this is a man's world jazz. 
without a doubt. You know, for 30 years I've sang with a BBC big band, for instance, and uh, there has only ever been, ever in 30 years, one other girl on stage with me. Things are changing too slowly, you know, so um, I think it's really good that people can go and see the amazing contribution that women have, have made to this music. We just, you know, it's the same old thing I've been saying for the last 30 years. Where are they? Where are all those girls? Maybe people like Nubaya Garcia and all those wonderful girls that are coming out now, Zara McFarlane, we keep mentioning. You've got to see it to want to be it, is that expression. And I think, I think, um, I think women would be encouraged. But it's grassroots, isn't it? It's whether you can get kids to get instruments in the first place. I mean, music yeah. is a whole big uh, conversation around music lessons in school. You know, can you afford private music lessons? Is it therefore, you know, is it even a, is, is it a fair playing field? I don't know. But it's a tough life being a musician. And you're on your own a lot. And you're in the dark a lot, in a car a lot. You're out traveling a lot, um, and it's it's you know you've got to really want to do this. You know it's it's not, it's it, it, it I don't think it's easy for men or women. But it's it's you know young girls might think oh stop that, coming in at three in the morning, <laughs> playing in a band full of blokes. I mean I don't know I don't know if it's just like it, attractive to I don't know. I'm still scratching my head. I have no answer. I just think. Girls like Trish Clues going into schools. Um, Izzy Barrett and uh, Nigel. Izzy Barrett yeah. and Nigel, thank you. Um, you know, all those things. We do Jazz for Genius when we did the South Coast Jazz Festival. Uh, anything that's going on that, that, that sort of, it, you know, exposes younger players to it. Uh, Nigel, yeah, that's a fair... Uh, yeah. uh, the Wiltshire Jazz Youth Orchestra, Why Joe, mm. when I went up there this year when I was artist in residence there, and I went up and, and, and played with them, and there was more women more girls in the sax section than boys and I took a picture I was nearly fallen out and I tweeted it and put it on Facebook but here's this is this is it a female sax section just just out just because there is not because we've made it all girls on purpose no you know that whole let's just like, get a woman's band together because we're all women you, you know you've got to be good enough you've got to cut the mustard um I think the thing about BBC Big Band I'm, I'm not saying that BBC aren't aren't gender aware but um you know people have a a, a, a chair in the BBC Big Band and they hang on to it you know unless they retire or die yeah uh, the, 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 the space doesn't become free so I don't, I don't think it's not that the booker or even the band leader Barry Forgey who I've had loads of discussions about this with him you know he wants to employ more women where are they they've got to step up and they've got to have confidence and they've got to you know and, and, and put themselves out there and then the booker needs to book them and then they need a place in the band and you know but big bands are particularly bad for for being very male heavy, it's it's tough. Talking about big bands, in an interview about four years ago with the Guildhall School of Music, you said that one of the projects you'd love to do is to front an all female big band. Yeah. Have you had any no. sort of look? <laughs> can we start one? <laughs> well, we, we we can if there's a play, if there are the players. You know, it, um, I think I think we, yeah we could, but th- let's just say we did. I mean, the, the, then you've got to face for where do we play. You know, <laughs> where do we play and how do we pay? Where do we play? How do we pay? Because seventeen people on the road. Yeah, hundred percent. It, it's hard. <laughs> you know, I mean, look at Nikki Els. Fantastic. What a fan, What a role model for for women in music. And there she is at the vortex, cramming that big band in the other night. That's one I should have gone to. Actually, mm. I regret that. That had a great review. Um, she's amazing. She's going to be just. She's just awesome. But yeah, I mean, if, if somebody, I keep saying it, if, if there was one, there's, there's quite a few in America. I think, yeah. I think there was um, one, wasn't there one with um, Ivy Benson? Yes, so Ivy Benson's all girl band, but that was, you know, back in the day. Yeah, back in the day. Back in the day. They've got the. Um, got oh, the gay they, big band now. They, they have, they have, we have, yes. Um, and then it's the Jazz Divas over in over in New York. Mm. They've, they've got a really fantastic 18 piece big band and they always perform at like Jazz at Lincoln Centre yeah, and stuff. I have to look at that, yeah. Yeah. I interviewed Lauren Sevian a few weeks ago, who's a Barry player for the Mingus big band, mm. and the, they've got some like top notch. I mean, we've got some top notch players. I mean, uh, I can't think of, off the top of my head, perhaps because I've not met them yet of any female lead trumpet player. The high notes, screaming, that what, yeah. that's, that's what I mean. So you need four real screaming lead trumpet players. I mean, maybe they are. They probably, in, but I, I don't know where they are. Contact us at Jazz London Radio yeah, if you're a screaming trumpet girl. Yeah, screaming <laughs> trumpet girl that can go really red <laughs> and hit those seats. Exactly. But, um, yeah, maybe it'll change. It's, it's a shame, it, well, it's not a shame, it is what it is, you know. 
women are doing other things, aren't we? We're forging ahead in other areas. Maybe, you know, jazz is not lucrative. You know, maybe young girls just think, well, it's better in the classical world or, or it's better if we go into music publishing or we do other things around the area of music that isn't exactly performing. You know, if I had my druthers, would I do it again? I mean, I, you know, I don't know. I often think, you know, it's it's so precarious and you, you just don't know what's coming. You know, you've got to keep hustling. You know, it's, it's, you've got to have sort of thick skin. Sorry, am I putting you off? Am I putting you off for life in jazz? I can see you, oh God. your eyes going backwards in your head like, ah, oh, it's going to be really hard, this. It's rewarding and it's... it's. I was going to say, you don't, you don't regret it, though, no, do God, you? I don't regret no. it. It's the only thing I could do. I mean, I'm, I was, that, I was going to be a singer for... I mean, I love it. But um, there's things about it that it's tough. I am really, really, truly concerned about what's going to happen next year. You After know, Brexit? With, yeah, yeah. yeah, if Brexit happens. Do you reckon it might? Yeah, I think so. I think it's too far gone at this point. Uh, um, what I would like to do with like girls in music, I mean, mm. I, I think I've got to put myself out a bit more with it, with Izzy and, and getting to schools and going and talk to girls about, you know, having a little bit of self-belief and trying out and, and um, you know, they, 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 Izzy's got some real horror stories about girls being, being put off because boys discourage them or they might, you know, it's, 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 it's be feminine to be carrying around a French horn or something, you know. Or a Barry Sachs. Right, or Barry Sachs, yeah, something like that. You know, it's, it's perception, isn't it? And, and, and stereotype, it's unhealthy. Um, I mean, EFG did some great stuff um, this week. So they had uh, an all-female improv free session on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, like, the, the jazz Barbican things going on. There's going to be some films released next year about women in jazz. I think I think there's definitely the outreach there. It just needs to sort of spread more than mm. just in London. Yeah, good point. But there's they, you know there's a lot of things that need to happen outside of London. I think with this music and and you know we we do need to attract a younger crowd outside of London as well. We've got to look at the demographic of the people we're getting in and the youth to be attracted to come and hear it in the first place, and then maybe in those younger ears will be people that want to try and do it it's it's funny isn't it it's a very small percent it's a real specialist music this sort of thing I mean we're talking about the EFG it's massive the jazz festival it feels like that but you know soldiering on the rest of the year it's it's quite difficult for um, I don't know I don't know what will happen when this this audience kind of dies out frankly well, I I know that there's always an article like every five years in the Guardian saying jazz is having a comeback. But as someone like in this current generation, I completely believe that jazz is having a comeback. I mean, yeah. my friends who aren't even into music, <laughs> mm. who aren't into any sort of jazz music, you know, the the title jazz has changed so much. Like jazz no longer means you know the American songbook. Mm. It, it means this cool hip hop stuff. It, yeah. it means like this. Electric. Kamazi Washington's helped with that, hasn't he? Kamazi, one hundred percent. Shabaka Hutchins, Shabaka, yeah, Ezra nice. Collective, like yeah. all of like oh. Yeah, I mean, they're selling out, like, the O2 and I know, places it's, it's like amazing. that. amazing. So I, I completely believe that jazz isn't going to die out. It's just going to be a, a, a different genre to what it yeah. is right now. Yeah. Also, young people and would 100% be in the audiences if we could afford the tickets. 100%. Yeah. I mean, we can't even go to Pizza Express. It's 15 quid, you know. <laughs> but you can go to Ronnie's and do the sitting at the second house. Yes. Um, so you can get to see it there. Yeah, they hit, do you know what? I've never even thought about that. I've never even thought about that. That's a really good point. It's too expensive it's to get too in. Expensive. It's too expensive to get in. That is really so. It might be really good then to say, right, I'm going to do one night free to students. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, like, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that free student night somewhere. Brilliant. You heard it here first. I am, <laughs> and then go right here. It is. That's an amazing. I wonder if the, I wonder if the in Arts Council would fund something like that. That would be great if they would. <laughs> I mean, uh, even upstairs at Ronnie's gets so many of us, you know, that's sort of our place to go because it's the cheapest sort of jazz club. You have just, a little penny just dropped in my head. I'm thinking, <laughs> that's why. You know, you've got 30 quid to come and see me and Leanne Carroll at the Pizza Express in Chelsea. All right, you could argue that's 15 quid each for each singer. That's not a lot, 30 quid. I think we're going to put on a good show. Oh, 100% but, worth but, it. But you've got to eat. That's another 15 quid. You've got to get home. You can have a drink. You're looking at 100 quid. Who's got that? It's not my, or, or I what, definitely maybe not. don't have that. No, no, exactly. But that's what I'm saying. It's just, I hadn't, I hadn't thought about that. I'm going to really think about that. Awesome. Thank you. No worries. <laughs> so let's talk about uh, what gigs have you got coming up that you want to tell us about? Wow, what gigs? Well, I've told you about the... Um, oh, the scans. I've told you about yes. the scans. But the other one I'd like to talk about is on the 8th of December. 
at the Pissarra Room with Ian Shaw. Mm. You know, we haven't been there for a couple of years because it's been refurbished. And it's our, we call it our Christmas stocking. And it's uh, Ian and Amazing. I um, on the 8th. And he'll do some of his fantastic songs. And we'll do a bit of silly nonsense. We'll probably do the Pogues, you know, and have a sing song. Um, <laughs> and it's just, it's Ian and his element, really, because he's... It's, it's a bit like I'm the, I'm the straight girl, literally the straight girl, <laughs> and, and he's he's cracking all the jokes, and I'm just sort of like you know trying to be a little bit funny, but it's I just frame him, let him go, and it, and it's great. So there's that on the eighth of the Pissarro. Awesome. And then in December, um, at the fourteenth and fifteenth, we're doing the uh, Pizza Express, and then I'm doing a big BBC big band at the Delaware Pavilion in Bex Hill. On the 21st of December, and that really is a Christmas show, and I'm sharing the bill with um, Jeff Hooper, who's a great Welsh singer, and uh, we're going to do some, again, crimbo stuff. Uh, so that's that, really. Awesome. Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm thrilled to have been on your show. <laughs> You've asked some really nice questions. Thank <laughs> oh, you. Thank you so. <laughs> awesome. Let's finish with one last track from you. What would you like? I would, I would really like to um, revisit the wonderful memory of singing with the great Kenny Barron, uh, which was such a career highlight. Um, he was he was something else. And we managed to do the album in a day because he's just so brilliant. And uh, it was it was pretty nerve wracking. It was there it was a that was a really all male environment. Kenny Washington the drummer was late <laughs> and he came in with about four bouncers and <laughs> drum techs and they were all like these big geezers, you know. So there's me and all these blokes and Kenny. I, already I was worried about, you know, I've got to count, I'm counting, Kenny Barron. Uh, so I grew up a lot that day, blimey. Um, so Kenny Barron on the piano and it's Victor Feldman, uh, Weaver of Dreams. Amazing. Fascination. You're a weaver of dreams You and your come hither smile Just to hear you speak Can leave me weak as a baby in arms Poor little baby in arms Helpless before your charms You're a weaver of dreams You and your lips Warm and tender Just like magic it seems Thrilling, enchanting me too I'm in your spell and there's no cure I'm lost for sure You're a weaver of dreams And I'm in love with you You're a weaver of dreams, you and your come hither smile. Just to hear you speak can leave me weak as a baby in arms. Poor little baby in arms, I'm helpless before your charms. Cause you are a weaver of dreams, you with your lips warm and tender. Just like magic it seems Thrilling, enchanting me too I'm in your spell and there's no cure I'm lost for sure You are a weaver of dreams And I'm in love with you
give off dreams You and your strange fascination You're a weaver of dreams You and your come hither smile Just to hear you speak Can leave me weak as a babe in arms Poor little babe in arms Helpless before your charms You're a weaver of dreams You and your lips warm and tender Just like magic it seems Thrilling, enchanting me too I'm in your spell and there's no cure I'm lost for sure You're a weaver of dreams You are a weaver of dreams You are a weaver of dreams And I'm in love with you The JLR Interview Series.